Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News, January 25th, 2022. Stand up for your country. Very pleased you're with us. And violent crime is the subject of our Talking Points memo this evening. So this all accelerated. We've always had violent crime in America ever since uh, the Pilgrims were here. Um, But it really accelerated on um, May 25th, 2020. Okay, that's when George Floyd was killed by the police in Minneapolis in front of the whole nation. Since that time, violence has skyrocketed, and there are a number of reasons why. The first reason was that the riots that followed all throughout the United States sent a signal to criminals that they can get away with it. Because they saw people blowing up police stations, assaulting police, looting, and nothing happened to those people. So the visual images that people saw on television sent that signal, you can commit a crime, nothing's going to happen to you. The combination of that with the very permissive, progressive left law enforcement people, usually district attorneys, who wouldn't prosecute, didn't want to prosecute what they call low-level or nonviolent crimes, the combination made it a open zone for criminals, particularly in the big cities, to do what they want. You add to that the um, drug culture. This is particularly true in Chicago, New York, and L.A., where the violent criminals who control the street narcotics industry are all armed. They have to be, because if they're not, other criminals will take their money and their drugs. So they're all armed. It's narcotics driven. People don't understand that. Yes, there are burglars and there are muggers who have guns, but not nearly to the level of the drug traffickers. They are all armed. And in many jurisdictions, the DAs don't want to prosecute those drug dealers. They think it's a nonviolent offense and it shouldn't be going to court and people shouldn't be going to prison. Now, underlying all of this, and what I've told you is indisputable. If somebody denies anything that I've told you up to this point, they are not being truthful. Underlying all of this is the progressive belief that America is a bad country, that its justice system is racist, and that the police want to hurt minorities. All three of those things. Bad country, justice does, um, the justice situation racist, and the cops actively go and look to hurt minorities. That is what the progressive movement believes. Okay. So they, of course, fight against that. That's the defund police, all of that. Now, the Black Lives Matter outfit understands what I just told you about the progressive movement. So they immediately, after George Floyd was killed, mobilized to attack the criminal justice system in America, and they were successful in doing so. Because the media sided with the Black Lives Matter movement. That intimidated anyone who would oppose it because they were immediately branded racist. And the media would back that up. So if you opposed Black Lives Matter, you were a racist because of George Floyd. Now, subsequently, uh, because of reporting by me and others, we know now But we didn't know then that the Black Lives Matter movement is a Marxist movement that wants an overthrow of the American government. That's what they want. That's what they're in business to do. Still, the media won't report that. Still, to this day, you'll never get that on the networks ever. Corporate media is not going to tell you that. But it's just absolutely true. So in cities like New York, where I live, all right, which was once a safe place, 8 million people, but it was relatively safe, is now dangerous. 
So under Rudy Giuliani and Michael Bloomberg, all right, for decades, the city was safe because it was aggressive against crime. The police arrested the criminals and they went to prison. No longer. Now we have a guy named Alvin Bragg, who is the DA, the new DA. And he says, dope dealing, I'm not, I'm not prosecuting it at the lower level. Even if you have a gun and you go into a deli or any store, you point the gun at the person, take the person's money, I'm not going to charge you with a felony. I'm going to charge you with a misdemeanor. Now, Bragg is not long, and I'll explain that a little bit more later. He's not going to get away with this because now we have police officers being shot in New York City, horrible situations. The tide is turning against him but not so much in other places. San Francisco, the DA there is on a recall basis. That vote will be in June, Chesa Bodie. Los Angeles, George Gaston, won't, simply won't enforce the law. He may be recalled. Larry Craster in Philadelphia reelected. Craster's not gonna enforce the law, okay? Kimberly Fox in Chicago, you all know her, okay? obviously not going to enforce it. I mean, this woman is so out there that she said, I'm not going to really track down the people involved in this drug shootout because both sides had guns. That's what she said. It was a fair fight. Never mind the babies and the children that might be caught in a crossfire. Okay. Detroit, Dana Nessel, um, Boston, Rachel Rollins, Rachel Rollins in Boston. I'm not going to you know if you sell heroin on the street, that's OK. That's OK. Fentanyl, go right ahead. Not going to prosecute. Wesley Bell in St. Louis, G Jose Garza in Austin, Texas, Stephanie Morales in Portsmouth, Virginia. And I could go on and on and on and on and on. So no matter how good the police are, if you're not going to get prosecuted, Criminals are going to commit crimes. That's what they do. All right. Now, here's the real kicker on all of this. So the FBI does not have 2021 stats out yet. They'll come in the next month or so. But in 2020, in the middle of COVID, OK, there was a record amount of murders up 30 percent, 2020 over 19. OK. And. People getting shot all over the place. Who were those people? 53% African-American murdered. 53%. They are 13% of the population. 42% white. That includes Hispanics. Now, why are so many more African-Americans being murdered? Because they are in the neighborhoods that are awash with narcotics. See, my neighborhood isn't. Those people couldn't operate here where I live. But in the poorer neighborhoods, they're all over the place. And that's why African-Americans are being murdered. So you would think the progressive movement, Black Lives Matter, that say they want equity for African-Americans, they want privilege for minorities, would then crack down on so many minorities being murdered, right? No. No. Now, a guy like Alvin Bragg, the DA in Manhattan, and he took over from a terrible DA, Cy Vance. Awful. But Bragg is worse. In his mind, the entire criminal justice system is racist. And therefore, he's trying to break it all down by himself going against the legislature of the state, which makes the laws. So he, he said, I don't care what the law is. I'll prosecute what I want. He could be removed by the governor, Hochul, but she'll never do it because she's a progressive. OK, so summing up, we have a terrible violent crime problem in America. Terrible. And the power structure now is going to keep that going. The only solution is for voters to get rid of these progressive people. 
Will they? I don't have any confidence they will. As I said, Larry Krasner, who is a loon, re-elected as district attorney in Philadelphia. And Philadelphia has got violent crime through the roof. It's dangerous to walk in the city of brotherly love after dark. Dangerous to walk in Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, not so much Staten Island, but the other four after dark. San Francisco's ruined. L.A., your life isn't worth anything in certain neighborhoods. That's where we are, and that is a Talking Points memo. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are eight reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Stable monthly cash flow payouts with double-digit targeted bonus returns. They strategically develop in lower-risk, high-demand neighborhoods. Prime new construction is short on supply and high on demand. Diversification is safety from stock market risk. They have a short and long-term strategy for returns today and down the road. Specifically designed pandemic-hardened buildings. They are 15-year industry leaders with a proven track record. So if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, please start your due diligence at nria.net or call 800 800- 800-1414. That's easy. 800-800-1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at nria.net. Lowell Sidney joining us from Miami, Florida. He worked at the Kings County DA's office for four years here in New York. Um, he's now a defense attorney in the city and on Long Island. Am I making any mistakes here, Counselor? Uh, no, you got it right. Uh, thanks for having me on, Bill. Okay. Well, I'm glad you said that. I, I thought about that Talking Points memo in a very precise way. I don't think anything I said is untrue. I don't think it can be refuted in any way. So now we have thousands of people across the country being murdered most of them African-American. Why do you think we don't hear from the Congressional Black Caucus or the Al Sharpton group? Why don't we hear from them? Uh, I think a big part of the problem is that it doesn't suit the narrative. Uh, We have to just keep on going more and more progressive. And no matter what the results or data shows, we have to just, if it fails, it's because we didn't go too far left, sorry, far left enough. Um, someone like Alvin Bragg, my understanding is he's on the board of legal aid, which is a fine institution, but I like a district attorney to be law and order oriented, not uh, worried so much about the rights of a convicted felon. You know, I have more compassion for the victims of a violent felon than, than for the actual convicted uh, defendant. You know, as you know better than anyone, there are evil people on this planet. And it's not society's fault. It's just evil embedded in them. And they will hurt you and kill you. When you have a law enforcement structure that looks away from that, that denies that, okay, that says, no, that's not the problem. The country itself is the problem. You have anarchy. Now, in your experience in Brooklyn, it is absolutely unfair to the good people who live in uh, Brownsville, and the poor neighborhoods in Brooklyn, when these drug gangs run those neighborhoods, and there is very little being done to help those poor people, or am I wrong? You're, you're not wrong in, in your, uh, before when you were mentioning how it's not affecting, uh, let's just say the Upper East Side of Manhattan, it's only affecting uh, poor neighborhoods with a lot of minorities, and these are, are, are policies that are just only affecting them and, and again, it's, it's not safe for them to, to walk around their own streets and the people that they elected who, who they thought are uh, on their side are really just uh, a cancer to, to society at large. But that situation is replayed on the south side of Chicago and the east end of L.A., you name it, it's replayed. You don't see mass demonstrations against the drug gangs. You don't see 
demonstrations against the lenient district attorneys. The people do not mobilize in a public way against them. Why? The media isn't uh, televising it. Uh, it I don't think it's happening, though, Castle. I don't think it's happening. I know if it was happening. I don't think it's happening. Well, right. It's not, you know, I just think the people only know what they, they see on TV. The, most people get their news from legacy media. And you really have to dig deep in any newspaper to find about it. Um, yeah, but, but you're talking about people who are living it. Right. So where, where are the people rising up in the neighborhoods that are unbelievably dangerous? They don't rise up. Are they afraid to do that? Where are the preachers? Where are the clerics in those neighborhoods? Where? I don't know where. I never see any demonstrations against this horror. I agree. And I think that's part of the problem. Uh, I think that, you know, that there is no way to rise. And, and you know, t- talking about a DA like Alvin Bragg, uh, you know, you know, we hear a lot about it from the left about voter suppression. But as you know, Bill, uh, New York City is a great example of voter suppression. It's a one party rule. So the primary determines who's going to win. And for something like district attorney, there's really not enough of a groundswell. So whoever gets the political machinery and unions on their side is virtually they win. nominated. For the but I think, the, I think it's fear. From what I understand, if you go out in a poor neighborhood that's run by drug gangs and you start to scream, we want the police to clean up the drug gangs. The drug gang's going to hurt you and your family. And that's why nobody does it. Last word. Uh, no, I think you've hit it on, on the nail. Um, I think the problem is the, the leaders, I think, are supposed to lead. And we're hearing from, uh, you know, everyone from the vice president when she was trying to bail out uh, rioters during last summer or the summer before 2020, that it becomes acceptable for them. Yeah, I, I, it's just, it's horrible. And I don't know, I don't know if it's ever going to stop now. Um, some cities will, and New York may, after the police were shot over the weekend, maybe it'll come back, but we'll see. Counselor, thanks very much for taking the time. I really appreciate the conversation. Thank you again. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed everything is getting more expensive. We are in the biggest economic crisis since 2008. With a government that's printing trillions of dollars, consumer prices at the highest we've seen in 30 years. Inflation certainly here. And if the government continues its out of control printing and spending, the dollar could continue its freefall and lose its coveted role as the world's reserve currency. While paper money will eventually have a shrinkage in value, there are real tangible things that will always maintain value. So how do you protect your money, your retirement, your savings? American Hartford Gold can show you how to hedge your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. All it takes to get started is a short phone call, and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call them now, 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Okay, here is the final thought of the day. You know, we are um, human beings and therefore subject to a lot of bad things. So in my life, the good things and the bad things are about 50-50. Yeah. Fortunately for me, the good things overrode the bad things, but you got to be prepared for the bad things. Because in this life, it's always something. Roll the tape. What do health clubs, sweat, and saunas have to do with cigarettes? Well, Jen, it just goes to show you. It's always something. If it's not one thing, it's another. 
Either you smoke or you have a sweat ball hanging off your head. <laughs> it's just like the song we used to sing on Thanksgiving when I was a little girl. Everybody would come over to my house looking all pretty and cute and everything. And my mother would make a turkey with stuffing and for dessert we'd have the traditional banana Rosanna Dana cake. It's always something. The late Gilda Radner, a genius. So uh, when bad things roll in, what I do is step back. And if they're really bad, I mean something I got to deal with. If not, I ignore it. But if it's something I have to deal with, I write it down on a piece of paper like this. Okay? This is what's happening. And then I can walk away for about an hour and I come back. And in that hour, I have some solutions that I write down as well. Problem solutions. You be surprised how quickly you can fix or mitigate bad stuff that happens to you if you do that discipline if you take your time and use analytics you are mine here's the problem here is the solution can't do it all the time which is why you have me in the concierge membership program you got a problem you can't solve you got something beyond you you let me know and then i'll give you what i think is the solution for it but most of them 90 percent of them you can figure it out and it's worth it. It'll make you much happier. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. In a world that seems to have lost its way, who can you count on? AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. That's who. Now, more than two million members strong, AMAC believes in the values that we constitutional people care about. AMAC represents courage, faith, and reason in these trying times. They stand for national solvency in a time of runaway debt, national security and sovereignty over unchecked borders. They believe in the sanctity of life. These next two years are going to be tough. Now is the time to join AMAC. AMAC also gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts that will save you money, including AMAC's bi-monthly magazine delivered right to your mailbox. So please join today at amac.us. That's amac.us. AMAC is better, better for you, better for America. Bill O'Reilly is back on TV and only on The First. No Spin News, every weeknight at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on The First.